in the previous video we explored the internals of the ssd 1306 oled controller diving deep into the data sheet its block diagram spi interface charge pump and much more we also studied the oled modules schematic and analyzed the role of each component in detail in this second part we are shifting gears to the coding side we will walk through the key sections of code and build a platform independent ssd 1306 library this core library will be written in plain c and in next video we will move on to integrate it with platform specific spi functions for spidf and stm32 cube ide by the end of this video you will have a clear understanding of how each part of the code works we will also experiment with certain commands to see the real effects on the display so you get both theoretical insight and hands-on results if you haven't seen part one i highly recommend watching it first namaste and welcome back to avinashi tech here we deep dive into embedded systems decoding data sheets building real projects and demystifying controllers and protocols if you are passionate about embedded tech consider subscribing and join me on this journey before diving into the actual code i did what most of us would do quickly test the oled hardware using the arduino ide and the popular adafruit ssd 1306 library it worked right away which was a relief hardware check done but i didn't stop there i opened up the adafruit library source and studied how things work under the hood after going through the core logic i started porting the bare minimum into plain c keeping it clean and simple and making it platform independent later i updated according to the controller chosen so now let's look at that code in action and along the way i will also reconnect the dots back to what we learned in the ssd 1306 data sheet in part one of this video series all right so in common source files first up we have spi.c and spi.h files spi.h is simple just function declarations spi.c has the actual function definitions though for now they are mostly just printf statements and some comments this will later be updated based on the target controller platform that we choose this file also includes a few variables that define our spi peripheral pins next we open up ssd1306.h this header file contains a bunch of command macros and if you check the SSD 1306 data sheet, you can directly match each command with its hex code. From display on to charge pump, all the important ones are listed here. Just below the charge pump section, you will see additionally two macros, external VCC and switch cap VCC. These let us choose the voltage source for driving the panel. At the end, we also have function declarations for basic OLED operations. Moving on to SSD1306.c, let's start from the top. You will see macros that help control SPI, CS pin, and the DC data command pin. These macros internally call a generic function to set the required GPIO pins, high or low. There's also a delay macro that wraps around a delay US function. All of these functions will later be updated with platform specific code. Now, an important structure here is SPI handle. It holds function pointers named init, transfer, set CS, set DC, and reset. This structure approach lets us decouple the hardware specific SPI implementation from our main display logic. Next, we define a structure variable named OLED and initialize its members to SPI init, SPI transfer, SPI set CS, SPI set DC, 
and SPI reset. All of these functions are defined in SPI.c file. Below that, we declare a few helper variables and we also include the pin definitions from SPI.c. Now comes the core part, the most important functions OLED begin, draw pixel, and display. Let's start with OLED begin. This is the first function we will call in our application code to initialize the display. First, we allocate memory for our display buffer 128 cross 64 pixels equals 1 kilobyte. Then we clear the buffer using clear display. Next, we initialize non SPI GPIOs like DC, CS, and reset pin using a GPIO init function. Remember, this will also be populated according to the platform selected. Then, OLED init member function is called, which points to SPI init. If the reset parameter is true, we also call SPI reset member function. We have to give a reset pulse, that is to pull the reset pin high, then low, then high again. This follows the power on reset sequence from the SSD 1306 data sheet. You can always refer to the waveform there. Also, slightly larger delay values are used in the code. After that, we pull CS pin low to begin the SPI transaction using the SSD 1306 select macro, which eventually calls SPI set CS member function. Time to send series of commands. First, we start with 0 hex AE for display off. Next, 0 hex D5, then 0 hex. 80 to set clock divide ratio and oscillator frequency. We have discussed this in part 1 of this video series. 0 hex A8, 0 hex 3F to set mux to 63 since we have 64 rows. 0 hex D3, 0 hex 00 to set display offset to 0. 0 hex 40, 0 hex 0 to set display start line to 0. 0 hex 8 D is sent for charge pump setting. If voltage source is switch cap VCC, we send 0 hex 14 to enable charge pump. Else, for external VCC, we send 0 hex 10. We have covered this in charge pump section of our last video. Alright, okay. Time to confess something. In the previous video, I said page addressing is the commonly used mode. But I later cross checked that horizontal addressing mode was used in the code. Whoops! So here we send 0 hex 20, 0 hex 00 to set memory mode to horizontal addressing. In this mode, column pointer auto increments and once the last column is reached, it resets to column 0. Till here, it is similar to page addressing mode, but in addition to this, the page pointer also auto increments. When we reach the last page and the last column, both the pointers wrap around to the beginning. Alright, next we have 0 hex A0 to map columns, wherein column 0 relates to segment 0, column 1 to segment 1, and so on. We can remap this by sending command 0 hex A1. 0 hex C0 is used to set COM scan direction from COM0 to COM63. You can remap even this by sending command 0 hex C8. We will explore this remapping effects in the later part of this video, practically. So stay tuned. Next up, we configure the panel. 0 hex DA, 0 hex 12 is for COM pin hardware configuration. This depends on your hardware wiring and the COM scan direction. Let me give an example. If you are using 0x C0 and the resolution is 128 cross 64, the mapping looks like this. COM0 maps to row 0, COM32 to row 1, COM1 to row 2, and so on. This pattern is called the alternative COM pin configuration. And we will show in practice how changing it affects the output. Next, 0x81, 0x CF is to set contrast. 
you can adjust contrast between 0x00 and 0x ff. 0x d9, 0x f1 is to set pre-charge period. This configures the phase 1 and phase 2 durations in units of DCLK clock cycles. We have covered this in segment drivers part of our last video. Next, 0x db, 0x20 is to set vcomh deselect level, 0x2 e to deactivate scroll, 0x af to finally execute display on. Then we end SPI transaction with SSD1306 deselect macro to pull CS pin high. Alright, that was our OLED begin function. Now, scrolling further down the code, we come across OLED draw pixel. This function is the heart of pixel manipulation. It fills the frame buffer we defined earlier, setting each pixel to either white or black. Let me break it down with an example. Suppose we choose white as the pixel color and the coordinates are x equal to 127 and y equal to 63. To calculate the index in the buffer, we use this formula. So in our case, that's the last byte in our 128 cross 64 buffers of size 1024 bytes, which was allocated in the OLED begin function. Next, we compute the bit position using this equation. So for y equal to 63, we get 1 left shift 7. This means we are setting bit 7 of the last byte in the buffer. Now, if we change y to 62, but keep x the same 127, the buffer index is still 1023 or the last buffer byte. But now the bit position changes to 6. So bit 6 of the same last byte is set. This illustrates how each page which is 8 pixels tall, is stored vertically per column, which was explained in the previous video as well. Now, coming to the most important function, that is OLED display. Once you have filled the buffer with all the pixels you want to draw, this is the function that pushes that data onto the screen. It starts with a call to SSD1306 select macro, which pulls the CS pin low. Then it sends command 0x22, which sets the page address range for updating. Pages define vertical sections, and we are setting the start page to 0 and end page to 7, covering the entire vertical span of a 64 pixel display. After this, we send command 0x21 to set the column address range from 0x00 to 0x7f. That is all 128 columns. Together, these two commands prepare the display to update every pixel on the screen. Next, we call SSD1306 data list with our buffer and its size. Inside this function, we first call SSD1306 mode data macro to set the DC pin high, enabling data mode. Then, we use the SBI transfer function to send the actual buffer contents. Once the transfer is complete, back in the display function, SSD1306 deselect macro is called, pulling the CS pin high to end our SPI communication. That wraps up the OLED display function. A quick word about the command list function. This is used when we want to send multiple commands in sequence. It first sets DC low using SSD1306 mode command, then sends the command array over SPI. And for sending a single command, we use SSD1306 command function, a handy wrapper that does the same, but for just one command byte. With that, we conclude our first section of common source files, Yay! which handles basic initialization, pixel drawing, and buffer flushing for the SSD1306 OLED. Now, let's tweak a few commands in the OLED begin function and observe the changes that we promised. To make it more visual, 
I will show an UI image rendered using the LVGL library. Don't worry, we will cover LVGL in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, it's just to help illustrate the effect more clearly. Let's talk about segment and comp remapping. So right now, we are using command A0 for segment remap and C0 for comp scan direction. With these defaults, the image appears upside down. Let's change the segment remap to A1, which maps column 127 to segment 0. After flashing, you will notice the image flips vertically. Hmm. Now, we will restore the segment map to A0 and change the COM scan direction to C8, which reverses the COM output scan from row 63 to 0. After flashing this, the image is now flipped horizontally, but it appears mirrored. To correct this, we again set the segment remap to A1, flash the code, and now the image is correctly displayed upright. We also mentioned earlier that COM pins are hardware configured. For our display, the alternative COM configuration works. You can visit the data sheet to notice how commands C0 and C8 map COM lines to rows differently. Now, let's modify command 0xda, which sets the COM hardware configuration and change its data byte from the present 0x12 to any other value and flush the code. You will see the image becomes disoriented. That's because this command is hardware dependent. So, unless you are sure about the display's internal wiring, avoid changing this value if you want your image to be displayed correctly. And that was a quick practical insight into how segment and COM remapping affect your OLED display. Woof! If you have followed along till here, pat yourself on the back shoulder. You have just built a foundational understanding of the SSD1306 OLED library, a platform independent core that you can plug into any microcontroller project. You have also seen how specific commands directly affect image orientation, not just in theory, but in action. In the next video, we will hook this up with ESP32 and STM32 platforms and take full control over each individual pixel on the OLED display. If you found this useful, make sure to like the video and share it with your fellow makers. And of course, subscribe to Avinashi Tech for more deep dive content like this. This is Avinashi Tech, signing off.